thank you for the invitation and the opportunity of coming uh, to be here. Jim, you have the floor. I'm trying to talk about uh, the world of 2050 is not an easy assignment in either English or French. It might be easier in Cantonese, uh, but it is not so easy uh, uh, to pull it all together. But uh, there are some themes that I think are worthwhile covering. And uh, I'd like to try and set the framework for some discussion, which I hope will follow. I suppose the first thing to say is that when I started out on my career in Australia, uh, there were then two and a half billion people in the world. Uh, next month, we will reach seven billion or whether it will be China in its existing form, or it will be China in another form, or India in its existing form, or in another form. Um, I could not have predicted the last 40 years accurately, and I don't think I am very likely able to predict exactly the next 40 years. But directionally, I think I'm right. And I think there is a great deal of evidence to suggest that on fundamentals of education, of investment, uh, of leadership, that one can expect that China and India will move in the direction of the target that I'm putting. And certainly that will be true of Asia, which will be maybe 60% of the GDP. But whether it is 60% or 50%, or 50% or 45%, or whether it will be one China or two Chinas. I think the important thing is that the weight of the world is moving eastward. And I think it is fair to say that the people in Asia are learning a lot more about us than we're learning about them. And they're fairly modest points, but I think they're important. And if you say that there'll be another billion, billion and a half of them, uh, I think you recognize something. I was just in Australia. And in 1956, when I was graduating university, there was a thing there called the White Australia Policy. And for Asian immigrants, they were allowed to give them a dictation test in any language. So if you were Indian, you got your dictation test in Chinese. If you were Chinese, you got a dictation test in Thai. And the result was that you were never approved for citizenship. Walking around Sydney today and getting countries no. out, you need a mechanism to administer. When it started, I used to give lectures on it, I think the Variation was 3% of GDP, and there was a limit of 3% of GDP in terms of deficit, if I remember correctly. That went straight out the window over a period. But originally, that was the number. And so we've had a lot of adjustments in the European Union, but not enough. And so what I'm saying at the moment is that I think that we're in for a period of uncertainty. And whether it's the Union or not, if you have bad debts that are increasing, banks at some moment in time need to adjust their balance sheets. And I guess sufficient number of people agree with that proposition that the market in bank shares today was hit very significantly. Whether it will go back or not, I don't know. But even some French banks that were affected today. So, I think the signs are there that we have a problem. And the question is, how big will it be?